Welcome to When Laid Off, Paid Off, Redundancy Success Stories. Coming up in this episode. Between my husband and I, we have been made redundant five times. So although I might not know your exact experience, I know something of what you might be feeling right now. In a sense, you've been given a second chance, an opportunity to do something different. You're watching When Laid Off, Paid Off, the show about providing you with positive stories and lessons to help you find the silver lining if you're struggling with the uncertainty and challenges of redundancy. I'm your host, Liu Batchelor, and I'm a presenter, content producer, and TEDx curator. And I'm on a mission to help people share their passion and purpose. This episode is brought to you in partnership with Heads Up HR. This episode's story comes from coach and mentor, Sarah Fox, who on being made redundant, worried about who she was going to be and how she was gonna make a difference in the world. However, she used the time to find out what she really cared about most and how she was gonna use her unique offering to really make a positive impact. Later in the show, we'll hear from HR expert, Nick Hawley from Heads Up HR, who'll be sharing his insight in how to not get stuck into the trap of applying for the wrong jobs. But first, let's hear Sarah's story. If you've been made redundant, first of all, I just want to say, I'm sorry. It's a really horrible thing to have happen. Between my husband and I, we have been made redundant five times. So although I might not know your exact experience, I know something of what you might be feeling right now. My name's Sarah Fox and I was made redundant when I was working for a housing association in the South East. I really loved that job. I was a community artist and I worked with a whole load of people who lived in different neighbourhoods. I worked with amazing artists and arts organisations and different partners to create really brilliant projects and pieces of work. Then 2008 happened and it was the financial crisis. The housing sector really suffered at that point. I was uh, in an organisation of about 600, 700 people and the only person in the arts. Uh, they were going through a restru restructuring as well, but the arts is one of the first things to go. And although they tried their best to keep me on, it just wasn't happening. So I was made redundant. I remember feeling really worried actually and fearful what was I going to do who was I going to be how could I make a difference that was always really important to me I was applying for jobs that had a big commute but I didn't really want to do that um, it was it was hard Eventually, I found a new job. I spotted an advert in a local paper which said project manager for a art, small arts charity. And that job was incredible. It changed my life in many ways. It was still about making a difference. It was still about working with people. But I really got to understand what I cared about and what I wanted to do in my life and how I wanted to contribute to the world. And I met the most amazing people, I had the most amazing experiences and I wouldn't change that redundancy for anything, actually. So I learned that it will be OK, you know, from the redundancies that we've had in my family, it will be OK. And I would urge you to use this time to think about what it is you really want to do. What do you really care about? What's important to you? When you're a 95 year old person sitting on a bench, what's the story you want to tell? So really spend some time thinking about that. Hold on to it and then trust if you can. I know it's difficult, but trust that it will be OK. Be optimistic. That's really important. And just hold on to what you care about because something will come up. 
I would also say I know it feels like you can be in a ditch and you don't really know how to get out of that but look up look at what's around you look at the support available who can help you you know find your tribe of people that could support you to get to where you want to be this isn't the end you know this could be the beginning of a really exciting chapter like it was for me so I left that organisation after nine years and I still do some work with them, but I'm now a coach and mentor. I work a lot with artists and arts organisations. I work with leaders, entrepreneurs, small business owners who really want to make a difference in the world, who want to do well, be successful, make some money, but also want to do good. Uh, and I do that with one-to-ones and in group settings and all of that has come from my experiences that I've had. I'm using all of that stuff now to serve and help other people. So, as I say, trust, be optimistic, think about what you really want to do, what you really care about, and you can do it. It's it's not the end. Good luck. Thank you very much to Sarah for that inspiring story. What I really loved about what she shared was this emphasis on making a difference. Yes, it's great to find the work that we're good at, but isn't it better if we can find something that also makes a difference? That's when we find true fulfillment. She also talks about the pleasure she got from working with great people and finding your tribe, which just goes to show If you can find an organisation or group who share your values, it really does feel like together you can accomplish anything. Next up, we'll be hearing from Nick Hawley from Heads Up HR to find out what he thought of Sarah's story and what advice he'd give people in similar situations. Nick, thank you very much for joining us. It's good to be with you. It's my pleasure. So in Sarah's story, we heard about her talking about applying for roles that I think kind of subconsciously she knew weren't right for her, but kind of ended up doing it anyway because of that, I imagine, panic and you, you've got to be doing something. What would your advice be to people? At like, ultimately, yes, you know, you've got to put bread on the table and you've got to earn an income, but if you get yourself into a role that isn't right for you, well, A, you're less likely to get that role and then how, how long is it going to keep you kind of happy for? What would your advice be to people to not get stuck in that trap but equally being realistic that, you know, sometimes you're not always going to get your ideal job straight off. Well, I think first and foremost for me, you know, when you face a redundancy situation, you've rightly pointed out that the immediate thing is that people start in panic and they fly the CVs here, there and everywhere and, and kind of recreating almost uh, the world of work that they, they've just left. Um, for me, the important thing is to press a pause button on your life and, and actually take a really good look at what it is you're doing, your values, um, the behaviours, the skills that you've developed um, and not necessarily rush in because, you know, the old adage, you know, you, if you rush in, um, you know, repent uh, at, at your leisure because um, if you get it wrong, you've wasted a hell of a lot of time getting it wrong. So for me, I think, you know, um, taking uh, a period of time, it depends on what kind of game you're in and what you're doing, um, but just to, to kind of really reflect and, and certainly the, the practice that I uh, bring to bear uh, is to get people to reflect very seriously about what they do, then to reframe and then to act. So, and rather than the other way around, which is a lot of people act and, and really haven't thought about what it is they want to be doing. Uh, for, me, for me, redundancy is a pivotal moment. It's a chance. It's an opportunity. Uh, and particularly if you're getting some redundancy payment out of it, it provides some little cushion to allow you to do that. Yeah, definitely. Would you advise people a specific amount of time or is it completely dependent on the individual? Well, I think it will come down to the individual and, and realistically how much um, financial um, cushion they they have. Uh, clearly, the more money you've got, the, 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 the more time you've got on your hands to be able to do something more constructive around you know, um, I totally understand the pressure that certain people will be under. If you've been made redundant, you've got bills to pay, you want to get back out there working again. 
you know, that's that's the real world, and I'm not trying to kid people that that, that that's not the reality. Um, but you know, it is a moment in time just to to take stock, and even if you have to get yourself a holding role, still use the opportunity um, to think through very very carefully and very clearly. Uh, you know, because in a sense, you've been given a second chance, an opportunity to do something different. Um, take yeah. it. You know? I, I like that idea of kind of like a holding role, or that as a term that you know almost in a way you don't want to enjoy it or kind of get too settled into it because it's not maybe the dream or, or that next step in your career but it enables you to relieve some of that panic and um, stress that ultimately isn't going to help you be able to think clearly and, and reflect and kind of find that right role okay so um so also mentioned she talks about use the word tribe and and i think yeah it's brilliant this idea of when you're with like-minded people that share your values work and achieving your goals is just so much easier isn't it however on a job description i guess quite often it's very much these are the skills this is the role it's very focused on what are you going to do rather than what's the culture depending you know obviously depending on each each business yes we can do kind of our research and there's that element but is there anything you'd kind of advise people in how we can make sure that we're, we're looking a little bit more in, into that element because because ultimately some companies will reveal more about the culture up front than others so what yeah what would your advice be about finding that element too well i think for me um i've got to remember i think people need to remember that an interview process or a selection process for a role you know it's a two-way process and i think very often we think it's a one-way process where we're out to impress uh, we're out to get the the job on the end of the line uh, and to secure a role um, and the danger, of course, that, that you could well find is if that's the main priority, um, you could end up ending up in an organisation that isn't fit for your values or they're aligned to your, your purpose in, in life and so on. So for me, a two way process, you know, if you're in an interview, um, asking a lot of questions of the, uh, the manager that's doing the recruitment and so on. You know, what is it like to work in this organisation? You know, and, and when you're in their environment, kind of look at the, uh, you know, do they have their values on the, on the wall? What's the vibe when you walk? into an organization you know you can soon soon pick up those those vibes and i think it's so important to just kind of make sure you you're clear and you're rigorous in your own point of view when 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 selecting a role get there get there a little bit early well it's good to get there early for an interview anyway but get there a little bit earlier so that you can i guess watch people milling around and see if, how they interact and all that kind of stuff very interesting and are there any are there any key questions that you think are, are really good to, to ask because I think it's quite common isn't it for you get hit with a load of questions as the interviewee and then they say do you have any questions and sometimes ooh, people it's quite easy to get panicked and not know what to ask is there any really good questions that people can use? Well I guess um, you know um, I'd be looking at, at, at asking an interviewer you know what, what engages you with this organization why are you working for this you know what do you get out of this organization um, that makes it right for you um, and that's a really good question because that kind of puts them on the spot to say why well, it's such a good place or not to to work um, so I think it's, it's trying to get into their shoes and start to understand you know um, I think what I, what I also find and this is down to the recruitment process um, is that many organisations also allow um, a, an interviewee to go and meet members of the team uh, that they're going to be party to, which will help a decision as to whether or not they feel it's appropriate to join that team or not, as much as it's a decision to, to make a, a selection decision. But take that opportunity as well, you know, to understand what the organisation's like, what are the pros and cons, you know. Um, every organisation will have them. You're just kind of weighing up which... Um, you, you want more pros than cons, of course. Um, but, uh, you know... Um, it's 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 getting in there and just, as I say, feeling the vibe of the place uh, and touching as much of that organisation as you can. Yeah, very nice. I, and I never would have thought of that or even realised, yeah, that you could go and meet fellow or, you know, future um, colleagues and find out. Yeah, really nice. OK, that's a really good tip. And anything else that struck you about Sarah's story um, that you want to comment on? Yeah, I think, um, and it's perhaps struck me in a number of the other stories that we've got as well, but it's... it's um, it's the attitude, what we call a mindset. If people have got a growth mindset, this is kind of accepting that, you know, um, we learn, um, we make a move, we take action, um, we may fail, but we pick ourselves back up and we move on 
um, you know, and by learning and relearning and unlearning and relearning, you know, your, your mind uh, starts to kind of make different connections, which takes you into a different, um, different space, if you like. Um, and, and I think that growth mindset is so critical for anybody, whether they're venturing into self-employment, whether they're taking on new roles or whether they're building the ideal kind of work and, and, and career that they want. You know, be brave, experiment, give it a go uh, and um, you'll be surprised what it can bring. I love that. Great way to end. Be brave, go and experiment. That's, yeah, motto for life there, for sure. Brilliant. <laughs> Nick, thank you very much. It's been great chatting. My pleasure. Thank you. That was Nick Hawley from Heads Up HR. For more tips, advice and support, including information about his redundancy support program, check out headsuphr.co.uk. Thank you for watching When Laid Off, Paid Off, Redundancy Success Stories. I hope you found some hope and inspiration from this episode. I'll see you next time.